Anyone who's been on the business end of a Dungeon Master's mental breakdown will know what a Tarask is. It is the most powerful monster before you begin to factor in gods and demon lords. It is also more commonly known of what you thought a T-Rex was when you were six. The Tarask is a 10 story tall world ender capable of decimating any level 20 party, but does it stack up to the military industrial complex? The uni- <laughs> It's kind of hard to be excited introducing the United States military. The United States of America has one of the greatest militaries in the entire world, eating up over 700 billion tax dollars a year. So let's say a 10 story tall behemoth rose out of the New York Upper Bay and attacked Manhattan. Could the United States military properly deal with it? Now, we can't really gauge what a real life Tarask would be like necessarily, but what we can do is convert real life measurements and convert them into 5th edition stats. Then we can use 5th edition D&D to simulate what an actual battle between a Tarask and a military would be. Now, the Tarask is the most feared creature in all of D&D, basically unkillable. How does uh, an army of just people stand to defeat it. The reason why this is an even fight is because D&D is heavily influenced by this concept called the action economy. This means in a combat, whichever side has more actions, they are more likely to win. With a personnel of over 1.3 million active members, I have a feeling the US military will be able to overwhelm the Tarask with just pure numbers. The only question is how many people it will take to defeat the Tarask. This also means I don't have to make the stats for a nuke in 5th edition. That would, I'm not gonna stat a nuke for 5th edition. What we are gonna do is we're gonna stat out your average US Army soldier. Now, I can't personally test a, a collection of United States soldiers, or can I? No, I can't. I in order to convert a United States soldier into 5th edition stats, what we're going to do is we're going to look up what the requirements are to join the military and build off of those requirements. We don't know the average strength of a soldier, but we do know what equipment they bring with them into combat. If we figure out how many pounds of equipment they use, divide that by 15, we know the minimum strength of a soldier given the D&D carrying capacity rules. Same thing with intelligence. I'm sure there is a minimum IQ it takes to join the military. Take that IQ, divide it by 10, we got their intelligence score. We can find the wisdom score with vision and hearing tests. The only problem with this system is that I'm gonna have to go Google all of this, and I am a 19 year old high school dropout who seems very interested in the requirements to joining the military. My IP is gonna get hounded by every army recruiter within a Hummer's distance. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me assure you, I am not a soldier. I am afraid of war. And those guns look heavy. So in order to avoid Googling all this stuff, I'm gonna use the next best thing to research, OpenAI. With just a few prompts, ChatGPT can fully stat out a US soldier. It came up with something pretty good, just slightly below standard array. ChatGPT also gave the soldier two levels of fighter, which, okay, pretty good. It also gives the stats for guns, which I'm not gonna use those, I'm gonna use the gun stats in the back of the DMG. It also, in the equipment, lists out a Kevlar vest, with a little plus two next to it, which I assume is Basically the same thing as a breastplate, so a, a plus two breastplate, giving our soldier a 16 armor class, 20 hit points, a plus four to hit with 2d8 plus two piercing damage. Also, the automatic rifle has a firing range of 80 feet without shooting at the Tarask with disadvantage. This means in order to have as many soldiers on the field out of range of the Tarask, we're gonna set up a uh, perimeter around the Tarask about 80 feet long in diameter. We could have 100 soldiers shoulder to shoulder shooting at the the Tarask 80 feet away from it. These soldiers can switch out if any of them fall unconscious, run out of ammo, if they have to take a break or anything like that. I don't know how long this battle is gonna last. We can figure out how many rounds this is gonna last by calculating the damage uh, and dividing that damage by the amount of uh, hit points that the Tarask has. But first we have to figure out how often the soldiers are gonna be hitting the Tarask. Now the soldiers have a plus four to hit. Each soldier does an average of 11 piercing damage. With 100 soldiers, that's about 110 damage a turn. Now the Tarask has 676 hit points. A little over six rounds, but that's assuming that they're going to hit every single shot that they have. We have to divide the amount of damage the soldiers are gonna do per round by uh, the amount of times the soldiers are gonna be missing. These soldiers have a plus four to hit, and the Tarask has an armor class of 30, which means it is impossible to hit unless a soldier gets a natural 20. 
And, and with a hundred soldiers, that's about it's about five hits around, about fifty-five damage. And the Trask has nearly seven hundred hit points. But we're forgetting. The US military doesn't just have soldiers, it also has artillery, it has armored vehicles. And, and in the DMG, it lists out the rules for siege equipment, including cannons, which is like artillery. These cannons have a plus six to hit, which, which is better, and it does 8d10 damage. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of damage. 8d10 piercing damage with the extra 55 from the soldiers means the Tarrasque is immune to the piercing damage and 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 bludgeoning and 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 slashing in basically any conventional weapons that the, the military has the terras will just take zero damage from it any bombs or, or missiles it uh won't even scratch it how about non-conventional weapons right U.S. has non-conventional weapons like napalm what if we set the thing on fire it's immune to fire damage and poison damage. We we couldn't gas it if we wanted to. I. This is fine. This is fine. This is totally fine. I'm sure the United States has some other kind of weapon. We could tase it. I know what I have to do. But I don't know if I have the strength to do it. There's only one option that we have left. Here are the stats for a nuke in 5th edition D&D. This was really weird to homebrew, and even ChatGPT thought it was pretty weird. A nuclear explosion is going to be dealing three different methods of damage. There is the blast wave created from the explosion, uh, the heat generated by the splitting of atoms, and the radiation from the fallout. For the initial blast wave, it is going to be doing 18 d8 thunder damage or force damage. It's about twice as much as a ninth level thunder wave. All of the heat generated by the explosion is going to be dealing 40 d6 radiant damage. I didn't go with fire damage on this because I feel like um, nuclear fission wouldn't just set things on fire. It, it, it is radiation, so radiant radiation, it, they just kind of go together. And for the nuclear fallout, we're going to go with 18 d10 necrotic damage. The fallout begins to tear you apart from the inside out. It's about twice as much as a ninth level sickening radiance spell. Combining all this damage together, the average damage would take about two nukes to kill a Tarrasque, maybe three. I, I didn't want to have to do this, but I was left no choice. And even though the beast is felled, I can't help but think if there was anything else we could do. We knew the world would not be the same. Two people laughed, two people cried, most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I don't want to set the world. your source on that uh, military taxpayer thing that you said. My source is Wikipedia. Oh my god! <laughs>